hello. Probably have the lights on too bright, but I don't really care. Um, you may be able to notice it's snowing. I've got my tea, books, and snow hat on because I've got some tea. I've got some snow. And I've got a book haul. So, hey, it's Alyssa. Welcome back to the channel. Um, I have received, 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 slash purchased, mostly received, but I've purchased quite a few books in the last, like, I want to call this a February haul, but because I think some of these are from January, but I've received a bunch since, for like the last six weeks. And I haven't showed all of them on, the, on my Instagram creaky chair. One day I won't film in the creaky chair. I haven't showed a bunch of them on my bookstagram, so I thought I would just go through and show you all the books that I've received or purchased and all of them like re little last little while, like recently. These are my recent, recent book hauls. This is a recent book haul. First, let's talk about the fact that I don't have a brace on. I still have a lot of pain in my right hand, but it's way better and I'm trying to live without the brace. I have this new thing that's like a heat wrap that I wear a lot, but um, the only way I'm gonna be able to go back to work regularly is if I am not having to use it regularly. So today, cause I'm off, I'm gonna try to see how much I can do without it, without doing too much and then making it worse. But the interesting thing is now my left hand hurts in a very different way, but like my left hand is very sore. So um, Tiger Bomb is my friend. Um, my left hand is apparently not used to, you know, having to do stuff. So it's, it's protesting. So yeah, that's a fun, Thing that I feared would happen and it, it kind of did so but anyway that's that we're on the mend hopefully I'm back to regular work soon but for now let's get into the book haul I thought I would start with books that like that I purchased and then I would go into books that I was given and some of the book tour books that will be coming up which I will do a little sneak peek of yeah so let's just jump into it and we'll start with book of the month so everyone knows what book of the month is. This is not sponsored by book of the month. I've linked down below. If you feel like trying book of the month, it gets me a f something and it gets you something. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. Book of the month. I wasn't overly excited about a lot of the choices this month. I got three books. Um, only one of them was a book of the month choice. I tend to buy too many books for book of the month because it feels like I'm not buying books because I have credits, but you're still buying books, Alyssa. You paid for the credits. Anyway, so one I was excited about was Honey Girl, which is um, sapphic. And if you remember, I don't really pay attention to summaries. So let's take a looky poo. So it's it's like a BIPOC sapphic sort of contemporary um, romance. It sounds like it's sort of not like coming of age, but like that early part of your life coming to terms with your life and maybe not necessarily things going according to plan. So I'm really curious to read this. I'm doing this as a buddy read with some of my friends when my friend in Canada gets hers because Canada apparently doesn't like to ship things in an appropriately timed manner. I don't know. Canada, fix your mail. So Honey Girl, super excited about Honey Girl. Yes. Um, I also got this N.K. Jemison, The City We Became, which I want to read soon because I have a Libby hold on the audiobook that came in. And the way that this was the way someone described this to me is it's a fantasy where the boroughs of New York come alive, which is just like a weird and bizarre concept. And I also know N.K. Jemison writes in this like really, really, really like highbrow fantasy way that I almost feel like I'm too dumb to understand. So I know this is going to be challenging and in like all the right ways. Plus it's set in New York and you want to make me read your book? Set it in New York. Um, and then the last book I got is just a book that I listened to last year and didn't have a physical copy of. And I figured I would just get it before there weren't any more. And that's an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. This is like a sci-fi sort of story where these, um, and like there's a lot of social commentary as well, but it's really, really good. If you've never read it, I highly recommend you read it. There's these like weird, statues that start showing up that just show up one moment um in one moment in time all around the world in different major cities and nobody knows what the carls do nobody knows what the carls where they come from they're called the carls because this youtuber um well she's not really a youtuber but she like she becomes this youtuber she's the first one to document it and it follows the story of the carls and i need to read the second one because i need to know what happens 
wind the whole background of the corals. Also, hand green is amazing. So that's book of the month. So what else do I want to talk about? Oh, um, I got these on Kindle Unlimited and then because I read the first two, and there's a third one, it's a trilogy, it's an indie author that I absolutely love. You've probably heard of her, J.M. Buckler. She is amazing over on Instagram. She's super sweet. She lives in Texas and I was gonna buy them anyway, but I sped up my purchasing of them when the, the snowmageddon hit Texas and she was really going through it. So I was like, you know what, girl? I'm gonna buy your books. I'm gonna buy them now. So this is The Seeker of Time series that she has. The first one is like really YA and really sets up the plot for the second one. The second one gets a lot more action-y and is there's some really good like medical horror at the end which I not horror but like kind of like body grossness that like I was really into and then this chunker is the third one and I haven't read it yet and she has a new series coming out eventually this year that is going to take place in the same world and what I was pleasantly surprised to find out in here when I read this is that this is sci-fi this is not fantasy this is not vampires this is not I was expecting like fairies I was expecting like all that I was expecting something else just based on the things that I know she like loves to read and I was so excited for it to be sci-fi and based in space and it feels like this first book feels like a WB show the second book starts to feel a little bit more grown up and then we'll see what the third book how the third book comes along but I mean I love supporting indie authors especially people that I have some sort of like connection with online. I'm always happy to try out an indie author and I think I might make that sort of a feature. Maybe I do like Indie Madness Monday or something like that on um, Instagram if I ever get my website up to up and running, something like that. But I just, I really love finding indie authors to support and to uh, explore because I feel like there's some really awesome ideas out there that don't you know you don't see in you know mainstream bookstores there's not a lot that i actually purchase a lot has come from publishers or for book tours and it's actually kind of crazy um i don't know how i got here but i've gotten to this point in my life as a booktuber bookstagrammer book reviewer dare i say book influencer i don't know whatever i am let's talk about the bane of my existence which is stickers but uh, I saw The Yellow Life going around Bookstagram a lot, especially just before it was released. This is a new release that I picked up at Target because I had an ortho appointment and I was really annoyed and I was right by Target. So I went to Target. I rarely ever go to Target. So I bought myself, cheer myself up. Yes. So do I really need an excuse? No. So I actually have no idea what this is really about, but it just, everybody who's read it has absolutely adored it. It looks amazing. I believe it is historical fiction and I love historical fiction and it just seems amazing. So it's set in the south. Oh it just sounds so good. I can't I, like I don't know everybody it's nice and thin like I can get this done really quickly. Everybody who's read it loves it like how could I not buy it? And then because it's you know it's February it's Valentine's Day. It was right around Valentine's Day when I purchased these. There was this Mr. Malcolm's List by Susan Allen that just sounded really cute as like a cute little like pick me up romance. Basically this guy's got this crazy list of things that he wants in a wife. There's a girl, I'm assuming there's tension, they fall in love, yada yada. So I don't know, this just sounded cute and I like to have things like this around just for when I need a palette cleanser and just when I need to pick me up because romance just makes me happy what romance does romance is is like my happy place so we can talk everything else is either sent to me from a publisher or part of a book tour penguin teen was kind enough to send me the entire sea fire trilogy because the third one came out this month and i am so excited to start this with my friend emma i absolutely love these covers like I mean, I, and I think it was described as like Mad Max meets Pirates or something like that. And it, it's like, oh, come on. Like, yes, right? Like you had me at Mad Max. 
let's get this out of the way. William Morrow sent me the Sarah Pimbrow because um, every month they send me a list, I pick some books. And I picked this because I'm like, oh, I've heard this name tossed around. People seem to like her thrillers. And then as soon as it came and I showed some of my friends, they were like, you know that she's problematic, right? And I was like, no. So if someone can explain to me why she's problematic outside of the fact that apparently behind her eyes is homophobic, which in and of itself will make me not read this, but I do like to know more before I just totally like toss out an art, a, 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 a cancel somebody from my, my world. Oh, sorry, my nose is running because I was out in the snow with the dogs. Yeah, I like to know more before I totally go, I'm never going to read this person. But I've heard, like, people seem to like her writing. But also, I don't really feel like supporting somebody who's problematic. So I don't really know what to do with this one. Anyway, this I got a while back, but I've never shown it on here. So I'm going to show it because I was going through the house just picking up books. And I this came from Scribner. And it's how to slowly kill yourself and others in America. And it's this really short like essay that my friend Aaliyah says I must read and I obviously haven't read it yet. And it's supposed to be amazing and powerful. And I'm excited to read it. It should be really short. I may have like a short book month where I just read a bunch of stuff, but like that was super exciting that showed up in the mail. And then I think this is also from Scribner or is this from grandson. No, this is from Hashet. Hashet sent me The End of White Politics, How to Heal Our Liberal Divide. I think I asked them to send this to me because it sounded interesting, but I honestly can't remember. But it does sound really interesting. I'll just read you a little bit. It says, The End of White Politics is about confronting not only America's blind spot for centering whiteness, angrily attacking anyone brave enough to point it out, but also understanding that America, of, the America of the future does not look like a whites only club that's the first interest like line the end of white politics is a statement of aspiration it's one that acknowledges a country where we are able to radically rethink the issues and priorities of our government and to center the needs of every single american regardless of their background by focusing on identity-based politics unless we reimagine how we lay out the democratic priorities and speak more intentionally to diverse communities, they aren't going to show up for us at the ballot box, and why should they? And that's all from an excerpt. That's all like an excerpt from the introduction, apparently. But So I, that just sounded really interesting and informative, and we all know I like a good nonfiction book because I like to learn. Speaking of nonfiction things and learning, I also received this from William Morrow, and it's The Women's History of the Modern World, how Radicals, Rebels, and Every Woman Revolutionized the Last 200 Years. Um, which just sounded like it could be informative and interesting. And I'm always here for learning more about the people we don't talk about that shaped our history. Um, in whatever form, that's a really broadly painted stroke. Whatever form that takes. I also received this from William Morrow. It's Little Gods. I believe this is a mother-daughter story. And that's why I purchased it. It's a story of migration, literal and emotional, spanning time, space, and class. Little Gods is a sharp yet expansive exploration of the aftermath of unfulfilled dreams, an immigrant story in negative that grapples with our tenuous connections to memory, history, and self. Also really short and looked really, really, really interesting. This is just a little, a little fun read. This is the Windsor Knot, which like the, this is a little mystery. And the premise is that Queen Victoria is a detective, not Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth is a detective. And that's like literally all I had to hear. This is the first book in a highly original and delightfully clever crime series in which Queen Elizabeth II secretly solves crimes while carrying out her royal duty. Like, that just sounds fun. <laughs> Sometimes you just want a fun read. Yes, I can read this and I can learn and then I can read this and I can just have a good stinking time. And isn't that the best part of books? Hemi is now playing behind the camera with his toy. It's gonna get really loud. I also got this thriller, Love and Other Lives, Head Lies. That is the sound of joy from my dog. I won't squash his joy. But um, Love and Other Lies, which just sounds like a pretty intense thriller. I do 
like thrillers, but I think I'm coming out of thrillers because they're just not messing me up enough. I need my thrillers to get grittier. They're too run of the mill. So I'm looking for the thriller that when the twist hits, I like put the book down and I want to immediately like get on my DM chat with my friends and talk to them about, oh my God, you have to read this book. This thing like messed me up. That's what I want. So I'm hoping this will do that. I don't know. We'll find out someday. And then I popped, I, I asked, I got the chance to ask for this from William Morrow. And I got it from my mom because my mom reads all this Charles Todd. And I don't know if you guys remember way back in an old vlog, my mom sent me home with like a stack, like a bag, a sack of books. And almost every single one of them was a Charles Todd. I read one Charles Todd. I still have not read through her sack of Charles Todd books. Hemi is really having a good time. So this is the newest and I asked them to send it to me so I could surprise my mother with an early copy of it. And her response was, Alyssa, I've already pre-ordered it, but thank you. So now I have it. <laughs> this I believe is also from Scribner. Yeah, this comes out at the end of March and it's Eleanor in the Village. It's about Eleanor Roosevelt and in her time in Greenwich Village, which I'm not always the biggest fan of everything with her, but there's so much that she has done that I'm not aware of until it's pointed out to me that I want to read more about her. I guess that's the best, the best way I can describe this. I mean, the Roosevelt's as a family really shaped the early 1900s of, of this country. And, they, you know, they had a lot of power and influence and they're really interesting people to learn about and hear about their lives. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt has a lot of really negative things about him. He also has a lot of really just crazy things to learn about his life. You know, FDR went through a ton of stuff and he is really fascinating to learn about. Eleanor has her own struggles and her own things that she's gone through. So I just find them a really interesting family to dissect. If you've ever watched the Ken Burns miniseries on the Roosevelt, it's really long and in-depth, but oh my God, is it a ride. Like, take a weekend, watch it. You will learn so much. It is crazy. I'm going to quickly just go through a couple, not even going to really explain this, but I have a couple book tours that showed up, including like a better bad idea, which I'm not going to say a lot about because this I'm going to do a book tour on. And then also I'm going to do this book tour for these really cute middle grades, which um, I don't really into middle grades, but these just look so good. It's the Winterborn Home for Vengeance and Valor. And then they have a new one coming out, which is, um, mayhem and mystery and like that cover is everything and I'm super excited to do the book tour and I'm so glad I'm part of it and to show it to everybody because I have it here you guys have all seen this this came in my unplugged box but mask of mirrors super excited for and I recently did a book tour for glimpse I read the ebook they sent me an e-arc and they were supposed to send me a hard copy book so that I could take pictures for bookstagram that never showed up until like yesterday and my book tour was a few days ago so Obviously, I figured something out. I posted for the book tour, but if you haven't heard of this or read this, this little G.F. Miller book is a super cute teenage romance that is a fake dating, sort of hate to love, really sweet book where the main protagonist, she's like a fairy godmother and he, her love interest is mad because he, she basically helped his crush end up with someone else. And then he's blackmailing her into getting his crush back. And then, you know, everything changes. So, I mean, the plot is rather predictable, but the writing is very good. And it's just sweet and will make you happy. And I highly recommend this book. I really enjoyed this. And that, my friends, is everything that I know I've received recently <laughs> or purchased recently. There are several more books coming as there always are. I ordered the first three in a trilogy because Tor said they were gonna send me the fourth one when it came out and I'm like, well, now I gotta read the first three. And it's a trilogy I'm really excited about. So when those come, I'm gonna show them to you. And then I have my eye on a few other things online. I'm trying to thrift more books than buy a lot of things new 
like I said, everything I bought is brand new this month, but like I'm trying really hard because the point of this year is to get through a lot of the books I already own, especially because as you can see, so many things just come in every month that I'm almost always drowning in books, which truthfully is my preferred way to, to drown. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is dangerous to put this here. Thank you guys so much for watching it. If you've made it this far in the video, really appreciate you. And I would love it if you left down below a tea time. And um, I don't know if I've said that one before. Maybe I have, I don't know, but it's tea time, it's book time, it's snow time. So we are going to just enjoy this snow day. I have reading sprints for the profits in a few hours. So I will see some of you today online um, live and then I will see the rest of you when I post this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in whatever the next video is because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Thank you so much. Bye. So just sit with me talking to the night into the morning building cat mystery